Let's talk about the structure of an astro file. Here I've got this front matter up top and these little ticks. Now this section right here is build or server side code. So it's gonna be run either when you build your site or if you happen to be using an SSR adapter, which we haven't talked about yet, and somebody hits your page, this will all be done on the server. In other words, this is never client side code. Down here is where all your HTML will be output. And you'll notice that it looks very much just like HTML because right now that's all it is. So let's talk a little bit about templating down this way. Anywhere down below here in your output at HTML, you can have any kind of JavaScript expression. Now this is not a statement in JavaScript, like an if statement or something like that, but a mere expression. So for instance, I could say something like one plus two. Not very helpful, but you can see there it's actually doing the JavaScript math right here, right? Now I could also do things like new date and here do something like locale string. And you can see that now it shows me the date and time as of right now. Again, to do any kind of templating like this, it needs to be inside of these curly brackets. Other than that, everything down this way is essentially just static HTML. Now up top, you can do JavaScript on build or server side. So for instance, I could have a variable, let's call it something like my num, we'll set this equal to two. Now I can actually take something from up here and I can go ahead and template it out down this way. So I could say my num just like that. And you'll notice that it says two. Now, once again, I could do like math on this as well. So I could add three to it or do whatever I want. And in fact, because I have the Astro extension installed, if I go ahead and do dot, it'll actually show me methods associated with numbers, right? So I could pick any of these because it knows that it's a number. Now, the same thing would be true of a string. So let's say my string. In this case, I'll do something like hi, and I can come down this way. And I'll just do my string. And you see it shows up over this way. Now, not to belabor the point, but we could also have something like a Boolean. So let's have this, we'll call it true. And then down here, I can just save my bool and it should show as true. Now, of course, where this gets really powerful is when you have more complex structures. So for instance, let's have an object up this way. And then let's go ahead and get rid of this variable so it won't yell at us because this object now has a nested structure. It's got some properties like strings. It's got this number. It's got an array. It's also got another object kind of nested inside of it. So what I can do is come over here and simply add this and say something like dot name. And notice how Astro knows the type of those things. That also means I could do something like two uh, locale lowercase, and it knows that it's a string and can use that method on it. Now, of course, this means I can also get more nested in here as well. So let's grab the address, dot again, we'll go to the city, and I can just pick off individual properties of this object wherever I need it. Now, the same would be true if I used an array. So let's simplify this a little bit. We'll just say something like Chris and Nicole. And now what I wanna do is loop over this array. Now, if you're used to working with something like React, you're probably used to JSX, and this is very similar in its syntax. If you're not, no problem at all. All we're going to do is map over these items. Now, this array method in JavaScript allows you to do something for each item in the array. I'll just call this person, and what I want is for each person to be inside of a paragraph tag. Again, because I'm templating, this needs to be in curly brackets, and I'll just call it person because that's what I called it right over here. Notice I've got Chris and I've got Nicole. And not to belabor the point, but it does know that this is a string, which means I've got all the different methods available. So to lowercase, once again, will work for us. Now, of course, this is only so useful. You could, of course, have local data up here and then pick it off as you need. But where it really gets powerful is importing data from elsewhere. So let's get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of this as well. And let's go ahead and open up the sidebar. And I want Astro to be able to touch these files. Now, because of that, it needs to be inside of the SRC directory. And I'm going to just create a new folder. We'll call this data, although you could call it whatever you want. And I'm going to come in here. We're just going to have something like people.json. And here I just pasted in an array of people. And you can see that it's got a lot of the same things we saw in the front matter earlier. Now, what I can do is import this in this front matter section. So I'll say import. We can call it whatever we want. So I could call it people. I could call it data. Let's just call it people since that's what it is. And then I just want to do this from, and I can go up a directory to the data, and then I'll find people.json. So you can import TS files, JS files, JSON files, the YAML files, whatever you want data-wise, and pull this in. And now Astro actually knows the shape of the data. So I'll say people dot, and notice it's an array and it knows that it's an array. So I could map over that. And each of these are people, so let's call them persons. And now I'm simply going to output some HTML. Now again, because we're templating, remember we need to put this inside of curly brackets. So I would just say person dot, and then I've got all those items available. And again, it knows the type because I've imported it. And so Astro tells me what that type is. Now, if you want to output multiple things in a map, you can do one of two things. You can either use the normal curly brackets and return here, whatever structure that looks like, or what's more normal is to wrap this whole thing in parentheses and then down here have multiple children. 
So let's have both their names listed out. That's not super helpful right now, but we could say dot age. I think that was one of them. Because it's a number, I should probably do two string, although the browser should do that for me anyhow. So now I've got their names and their ages. Now, if you're used to working with JSX with React, you're going to notice a couple of differences here. I do not need a key because this isn't live data. In fact, when I build, it will just statically build based off of this file, and that will be baked into the HTML. So I don't need to be live updating it, so I don't need a key. I also don't need a single parent. I can have multiple siblings right next to each other, no problem at all. So we've talked about basic templating down here. We've taken stuff from the front matter, including imported data locally, and we've output it down below. But you actually don't even need the data inside of your project. You can do this from anywhere on the web. So I'm going to come over here to JSON placeholder. This is a nice little like mock API. I'm just going to grab this to do right here. What I want to do is import this directly in the front matter. So I'm just going to say const, we'll call this res equals, and normally you'd have to wrap this in some kind of async function. However, this whole section up here is actually wrapped in an async function for you, which means you can do a wait top level right there. So I'll just await fetch, and I'm going to fetch that to do. Now, anytime you're fetching JSON data like that, you're going to need to grab it. So I'll say wait, this will be res.json, and that should give this back to me in a format that I can actually use, right? It'll actually be a JavaScript object. So let's come over here, let's get rid of all this, and now I can simply grab the data dot. Now in this case, it doesn't actually know what the data looks like. So what I want to do before I actually do that is go ahead and console log this. And that way we can see what the data looks like and we know how to template it out down below. So I'll go ahead and save this, come back over here and refresh. Now think about it, where is this going to show? Is this console log going to show server side or is it going to show over here on the client? Well, remember all this is done on build or server side. So it should show right over here and you'll notice that's exactly what it does. So I've got data here with a user ID, an ID, a title, and completed state. So what I'm going to do now that I know that is come over here, we'll do data.title. And I could also type this with TypeScript if I want. Right now, I'm not going to do that. But you can see that here, it's actually showing the title for me. Now, once again, by default, Astro is statically rendered, which means this will only work on build. It's not going to be live data. So let's come over here, and I'm just going to npm run build this, just so we can see what this looks like. If I come over this way, this will be a dist folder. I've got my index route, and notice it's just baked this directly into the HTML. So when it built, it grabbed everything from this front matter and then placed it down below where needed. Now there is a way to make this more dynamic that's using server-side rendering, and we'll talk about that later in the course. But for now, note that the default behavior is that everything is static. So when it's built, that's when everything is kind of baked into your HTML in stone. Now, if you've been thinking here, you'll notice that there's some kind of complexity we've got going on. I've got this HTML tag right here. I've also got an HTML tag over here. Well, it's an index route, but either way, it's, it's a separate route, right? So if I come over here like this, this is a separate route. But wouldn't it be nice if I could have a basic structure and simply slot in content where needed? Well, that's where the concept of layouts comes in. And that's what we'll talk about next. I trust you enjoyed that video. I'll remind you that this whole playlist is a sneak peek of module one for my course, LearnAstro.dev. If you're interested in getting that course at a discount, check out the link below. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.